Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm here in the southern part of Colorado on the Front Range. It's a secret location for obvious reasons. We're out looking for morels and um, I'm with Ross from Outdoors Inspired. And Adam, what's the name of your YouTube channel? Zilnich Productions. Zilnich Productions? Yep. I'll leave a link to both of these guys' channels uh, in the description so you guys can check them out. But Ross brought me to a secret area. That's why I'm not showing the skyline or anything. But we found some morels here. These are the first ones I'm ever seeing in my life. <laughs> right there. They're kind of dry right now. We had a little bit of rain, but apparently not enough, but they are coming up. So they're a little bit dry. I don't know, are these considered keepers? Yeah. yeah? These ones are a little bit smaller. That's good. They're not as buggy that way. But make sure you have a nice sharp knife. Adam just found some more over there. Here they are. I'm so happy that we didn't get skunked at least. We actually seen um, a cut one. Just back here we saw someone else that had actually beat us to this spot. There's another one here somewhere. There it is. Nice. This is a keeper, guys, right here. Under the leaves. A little dry, definitely a keeper. <laughs> Here's one, dude, a big one, under the leaves right here. Look at that one. So the morels we're finding uh, this time of year um, in this elevation, which is about 5,300 feet, um, we are near cottonwood trees, and these are the blonde morels we're looking for. There's Ross over there. Adam's just behind those trees there. Adam actually found another one. He already cut it. And basically, I'm just looking on the ground very carefully. They are pretty hard to see. They kind of blend in, so it's just a lot of slow walking and keeping your eyes open. All right, if I find anything, I'll let you know. Oh yeah, I found another one. You found one? Found a couple over here. Note to self, if you find a morel, do not walk away from it. This is a pretty big one that Ross found. That's a really big one. It's a nice one right here. And it was covered in the shade, so it's still kind of moist. This is how you want them right here. See that when the stem's still nice and white like that? Mm -hmm. it's, that's optimal, it's prime. No bugs. Mm. Wow. That's almost as big as my hand. It's awesome. Cool. There's another one over here. Good job on that. Oh, I see the other one now. You see it? I see it. Good size too. We're in the patch now. <laughs> and another one right here. Hiding. You want them still nice and wet. I just want to like crawl around on my hands and knees and find them. Wow. Ross found a little patch of morels over here. Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, yeah, there's like, see it? I see like two back in there. There's like three right here. And then there's one. Pick it, man. Pick it. Right there. It's like 72 degrees out, just sunny, slight breeze. go nice blonde morel right there let's show you what Ross got here mr. Nice outdoors little, inspired nice little here you go he has the baggie cool. 
Just what? that magic pouch right here. Yeah, it's good to keep them in like a cloth or mesh bag because... Yeah, you don't want to put them in plastic because they sweat mm -hmm. and then they'll get all mushy, especially with the sun and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep them like in a cloth. Preferably it's good if you have like a, like a net bag because as you carry them they drop spores. And it's good because it releases more spores for next year. That makes sense. But I don't have a net bag. Adam brought one. So. Where he found his morels were way back in this, this thick stuff, so it's kind of hard to get to. So you really got to keep your eyes open. We're finding them. We've found probably 10 of them so far. Probably have a good, Maybe a dozen. A pound right here. He's got about a pound of morels already. And we just got here about not even a half hour ago. So Ross called me over, and I can see it right here on the trail. All right, Ross said I should pick this one, so let's do so. Wow, that one's pretty dark, too. Man, there's such a weird looking mushroom. That's cool, that's awesome. They're like all, they look like a little brain. Here's what we got so far. We'll, we'll weigh them out at the end, but that's, we got about a pound in there. Just got a hour in, that's not bad. Not too bad at all. So Ross is out here in the open right now telling me to not look out in that area because you're not going to find that many out there. I mean, you might if you get like a really good rain. Uh-huh. Uh, usually they're like in these little thickets where there's a good amount of shade throughout the day. So like right in here where it's shady is like kind of like where we're going to try to focus our attention. Unless you get a lot of rain, then yeah, out there would be good. But I mean, as you can see, there's thickets all over the place. I mean, there's a million places to look here. We already did find a couple. Um, yeah, I thought that was an important tip to bring up on camera. Fine, this means there's mushrooms. There's enough moisture in the ground. Ross found some little, some more mushrooms. Not sure what kind they are. They look like they'd bruise if you touched them. That's cool. And then Adam's over that way. He found some oyster mushrooms growing on a log, but they're really dry. Oh, that sucks that they're dry. These are like one of my favorite mushrooms right there. The oyster mushroom. They're usually nice and big and white and juicy. I bet you like three or four days ago those would have been prime pickings. Yep. Usually up in Pennsylvania they're eaten by the bears before you can even get to them. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. More bushwhacking. So we've been here for about an hour and we found, as you saw, about a pound of them already. I would have been happy with just finding one, um, even if we didn't find any. It's really a nice day out today. This is really, really cool. Ross did not have to show me the secret spot or anything and I'm gonna do my best to protect the location. Uh, on this video, um, everything in the background is nondescript. You won't be able to find it, but I can tell you it's in Southern Colorado along the Front Range area. There's plenty of places just like this that you can go and scout out for yourself, find yourself some morel mushrooms. And it's, it's all about just walking slowly, keeping your eyes open on the ground. I've actually only found one. Ross found pretty much all the other ones and Adam as well. It's cool. Awesome. You found some here in the open? Dry ones there. Oh, I see it, yeah. Basically, it just depends where the spores. I mean, that's you find them. You'll find some of them out here. Oh, look at this one. There's a few dry ones here. That's just to leave those ones and let them spore out. Just leave these ones go, huh? They're no use to eat. They have a few. Yeah, they're pretty dry, man. It's always good to leave a few behind just so they spore out. Mm -hmm. One right behind your foot there. One right here, there's a few behind. Another one, little one. This and then... one's probably worth picking. Oh yeah. Trying to pick that one at him. Yeah, I've never actually found any in this part right here. So these are... You never know. Yeah, you never know where they're going to pop up. Is that a snail? 
No, that's more mushrooms. Yeah. They're all just little mushrooms all over the place. There's more right there. Don't know what kind they are. So we're across the creek here. We think the mother load is over here. So we're just gonna scout around for a bit. If not, we'll go back to that original spot with the, uh, the cottonwood grove. Ooh, look at that big ass beast. Who found that one? Which one? The biggest one. This one, I found this one. Uh, that's nice that's one. when I was crawling on my hands and knees and I was like, oh, this one's, it was under the leaves and a big branch. That's why it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's over there. But we got, I don't know, Two pounds of mushrooms here? What do you think? Maybe more? Two pounds. All right guys, this is what we found today. We've probably estimated about two, two, maybe three pounds. But it turned out to be a good day. We weren't sure if we were gonna find any, being it so dry. So we're pretty happy. But that one's almost black. Yeah, it's kind of like a gray one. So are these little ones, these smaller ones are kind of dark. But these are all blonde morels. What do you have to say about it? Thanks for showing me your secret spot. Don't show the background. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there we go. 14 morels. Um, that was awesome. I didn't. We actually didn't know if we were going to get any today. But as you can see, we got 14 morels. Um, these ones were dried out, but we kept the stems. Um, next thing, uh, I think we're going to do some cooking with clutch guitars. All right, we are here in the kitchen. We've got our morels. They've been soaking in water for a little while. Just because there's a lot of bugs and worms and things that could be in there, a lot of dirt and stuff. Uh, even on the stems, you wanna make sure you cut off a lot of that dirt and stuff that you can actually see. You know, the dirt won't kill you. It's just, you know, nobody likes to eat a mouthful of dirt and sand and stuff. So trim them up. Make them all nice. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and split these in half. This is the first time I'm actually cooking morels and it's going to be the first time I ever tried them as well. So again, big thanks to Outdoors Inspired and also Zilnich Productions for taking me out there. We'll just cut them down into sections that can be pretty easily cooked. That's a big fat piece right there. I'll cut that in the quarters. I saw a bunch of different recipes online. Uh, Ross told me his recipe. Chris from Yeti Mountain Trading gave me his recipe. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and use butter, salt, and pepper, and that's it. Just for my first time trying it, just to give me like, you know, the most natural flavor the first time. Maybe next time I go out, then I'll try getting fancy with egg and all this other stuff. This one here has like white, stuff inside. Don't know if that's mold or not. Not 100% sure about that and I hate to waste it but I'd also hate to get sick. So I think I'm gonna actually throw that one out. This one was that, this is that one that was like darker than the rest. You know what, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just crumble this up, dry it out and next time I go out in the woods I'll just sprinkle it around a cottonwood tree. Maybe it'll sprout some. Maybe add some water to it and you know make like a slurry. Like Chris from Yeti Mountain Trading does. So I'm gonna save that, it won't go to complete waste. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse these one more time. All right, so I'm just gonna let these kind of drain off, get all that moisture off of there from the water. Yeah, we're just gonna heat up some butter in the meantime in a pan, crank it up. We'll put about that much butter in. Right, we got our butter melting here. This is gonna be good. 
Now I never tried these before ever, so that's why I'm just using butter. One recipe is you take your morels and you dip them in and beat and beaten up egg, and then you mix it with flour and some lemon pepper uh, seasoning. I actually bought the lemon pepper seasoning, but I changed my mind. I'm just going to do it do it this way. We'll see how it tastes just like this. So I've got it on medium heat here. We're just going to start throwing these in. And then these should reduce in size. So we got some of this uh, water down here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and drain that off. I don't want them too soggy. It does smell really good. You can see that pretty much all of them have that nice golden brown ring around them like that. And right, I think they're pretty much done. Let's give these things a try. All right, I got a little bit of salt. Some pepper on there, just a little bit. And I think we're all good. Here we go. Wow, now I see what the big fuss is all about. It doesn't even really taste like a mushroom. It's almost like chicken or something. Wow, they are super good. I've been doing research on where to find these things and now I'm twice as excited. Right now it's just getting into the second week of May. We just had a big rainstorm yesterday. It's raining all day today. If it gets warmer, this upcoming week, it's going to be a really good time to go out looking for morels. A good place to look for them is in floodplain areas. Also, there's a website called morelsightings.com or something. I forget what it's called, but I'll put a link down there. It tells you where morels have been found. Click on your state, it'll zoom in, it'll show you right where the mushrooms that people have reported seeing them. Um, and it gives you like the month that it was found. And then you can open up Google Earth, find out where that marker is match it up with the elevation and kind of like the terrain and you can find your uh, you can find your own morels in your own state possibly if you're lucky to live in a state that has them I'm pretty sure most states have them but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit the thumbs up button if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and do that I put out a new video every three days don't forget to subscribe to outdoors inspired and Zilnich productions links in the description to their shows as well that's all I got for today thanks for watching